हेलो टीम वेलकम टू माय सेशन ऑन कॉफी विद प्रब एंड टुडे वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट क्रॉस साइट रिक्वेस्ट फॉर्जरी वन ऑफ द डिफिकल्ट टॉपिक एंड आई थॉट लेट मी मेक अ वीडियो ऑन दैट बिकॉज आई रिसीविंग अ लॉट ऑफ फीडबैक्स ऑन एप्लीकेशन सिक्योरिटी इट इज़ अ कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ माय क्रॉस साइट स्क्रिप्टिंग वीडियो माई नेम इज़ प्रब नायर फॉर मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन डू चेक माई लिंक प्रोफाइल एंड इफ़ यू न्यू टू द चैनल डू सब्सक्राइब टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल एंड क्लिक ऑन द बेलाइकन टू मेक श्योर यू शुड नॉट मिस माई फ्यूचर वीडियोज ऑन अ सिमिलर टॉपिक so without wasting a time let's start with the first part thank you so if you basically go by the introduction of csrf it is say that it is an attack that force an end user to execute unwanted action on web application in which they are currently authenticated okay now cross site request forge forge basically mean fake request so let me explain you with the practical aspect how it works so suppose we have a hacker avoid my ignore my drawing so this is the hacker now what he did he basically host a website okay he host a website now in the website there was a blank page but in the blank page instead of adding a image instead of adding a image he basically give the space for the image and in that image space he add the script the script was like this http gmail.com slash reset password equals to new password so it mean whatever the new password you want to set so here what happen we add a predefined url which i want user to click and execute predefined url in this particular page and i give uh, the name to this website called www.dump.com okay so this is basically a page i hosted as an hacker okay now what happen we have a user here so user basically has a browser okay so this is the user i sent this url to the user on his email definitely to check uh, let me sent an email the link now what happen he open gmail he need to open gmail because he need to uh, check the mails and all that so what he did <clears throat> he was authenticate with the gmail server so this is basically a gmail server okay so he authenticated because he need to log in and based on the authentication they give a confirmation so now he can see there is a mail came from his instructor who sent a detail about the hey hey guys please find the active dumps for this questions so normally what happen any user who receive a link from his trusted user he will click and this user also did the same thing so this user what he did he click on the link and that link was redirect to this page and this page was trying to load on this particular tab so new tab which is called dump.com so team just imagine you open a page okay and when you click on the link and page need to be load the page was completely blank okay the page was completely blank so if you find any page which is blank what you do please put it in the comment box if you ask me if the page is white blank i will refresh the page and this user did the same thing he refresh the page in the page itself there is a default script is there http gmail.com reset password that request here that request actually give me second let me so that request actually goes to the gmail 
because the url was gmail.com right so gmail thought so this is called the request which is a forge user was not aware about that he just refreshed the page but the page has a default script http gmail.com reset password that predefined syntax sent to the gmail so gmail thought the user want to reset the password and based on that gmail confirm and reset the password for the user that's why you know sometimes what happen you receive you know i click on the link after that my account got hacked after click on the link my account got reset that is what so that is a call it is an attack that force an end user into executing the unwanted action on the web application so now here the script was reset password instead of that we can have suppose attack script so that script going to be attack on the gmail that is why in last 10 year we introduce a concept of session id so even someone basically copy the url which is called httpgmail.com if you don't have a session id gmail will not accept that as a connection because by session id only we identify the connection so the most effective countermeasure for the csrf is add the session token okay so csrf is basically attack which is force the end user to execute unwanted action on a web application in a, in which they are currently authenticated so example is attacker send the link to a victim we did the same thing victim click on the link it trigger the state change request to the web application with gmail where the victim is authenticated as he already authenticated on gmail whatever we sending in instruction to gmail he will reset the password so with the help of social engineering attacker may trick the user of a web application into executing action of the attacker choosing if the victim is normal user successful csrf attack can force the user to perform state changing request like a transfer fund changing their email address so forth that's why today if you doing such kind of an activity ask for the otp so random session token multi factor authentication is the only countermeasure we have for the csrf and if victim is basically administrative account then csrf can compromise the entire web application so how it works so user log into web application we discuss application authenticate the user and typically set the cookies with the session token so that is basically the first step right that is what is the first step we did then second is malicious request so attacker trick the authenticate user into submitting a request to the vulnerable web application in that case it was a gmail and this is basically done through social engineering and then we basically have a forge request execution the request to the web application is made with the user credentials but without user knowledge because he refreshed the page in his absence the request goes to gmail right so this is basically i have a hacker machine this is basically the user browser which has a two tab one is called as a gmail so in gmail he was authenticated with the gmail server so this is basically a gmail we have right we have just discussed <clears throat> so this is basically gmail sorry for the right so this is basically gmail so here what happened as he already authenticated on the gmail he as he already authenticate on the gmail whatever the instruction he sent to gmail he will accept and here when he refresh the page that was a forge request goes to gmail okay which can be for resetting a password reset the account and all that so request to the web application is made with the user credentials like cookies but without the user knowledge or intention since the application can't be distinguish this forge request from a legit bit one it proceed the request so in this attack we exploiting a trust the user has or server has on the user because whatever the input is coming it is coming from the user right so what is the consequences of this attack unauthorized access okay financial loss data breaches and more important we have a reputational damage so these are the major concerns consequences we have in the csrf so what is a countermeasure that we need to understand see the first countermeasure is basically use anti csrf token okay it's a very common defense which include the unique token in, in the form which verify the token on the server side when form is submitted that is a one thing second is same site cookie attribute so modern web browsers basically support same site cookie attribute which can prevent the browser from sending a cookie along with the cross site request so here what happened the request was generated from the other website page to the gmail right so same site cookie will prevent that third is basically we check the refer header so some application check the refer header of incoming request to verify request originated from a trusted source or all we also have a custom headers where 
we force the user to use standard HTML form or script with which they cannot set custom header. So requiring the custom header in a request which can help to prevent the CSRF. Avoid get request from a state change. So we have a get request should not be used for the state change operation. Only we use post because get send the information in the URL. Post send in the body. So post, put, delete should be used for an action that change the state. Last is basically logging out. So we always encourage user to log out of the application when they are not using them. Okay, so these are basically the most effective countermeasures we have. See, one of the most important thing we need to understand is the same site cookie attribute. I want to discuss this part. Same site cookie attribute because it's a very, very most, very important countermeasure we have in the CSRF. So normally what happen, uh, same site cookie attribute is setting can be added in the HTTP cookie. So by which we can able to control the domain behavior, cross domain behavior. And the primary goal is to mitigate the risk of cross origin information leakage and provide some protection against the cross site request forgery attack. Okay, so that is what we have in the same site cookie attribute. We have one function which is called as a strict mode. Strict. Strict mode. So when we're talking about a strict mode, the cookie will only send in requests originating from a same site that is set as a cookie. And this is the most restricted usage we have. Okay. So that's something we can try. Now there are a lot of interview questions basically ask uh, based on this topic. So example is what is CSRF? How does it differ from cross site scripting? Very common question. Okay. How does same site cookie attribute helps to prevent the CSRF attack? We already discussed. Uh, how would you implement, you know, CSRF protection in a web application? Okay. Can you give example of a situation where CSRF might be significant risk? You know, so this is basically another question. How would you test a web application for CSRF vulnerability? And the most common, which is management perspective, sometimes ask is, can you explain a complex security issue like CSRF to the non-technical stakeholder? So this basically tests your communication skill, which is crucial for the role that involved explaining technical details to the client or non-technical team members. So let's understand now the thin line difference between the cross site scripting and forgery. See, if you see the logic here, okay, the first is say cross site scripting is a vulnerability that basically allow the attacker to inject malicious script. So if you, if you see the user here, okay, he basically inject the script on the website. Then, oh hacker, sorry. Now what happened user basically visit the page and the page is loaded on the user. User click on the script. He requests the script to the website. Okay, website thought user has requested. So here we exploit the trust. The, the website has on user, user has on a website because user send the request to web. Please open the script for me. I want to check the website without verifying input process script back on the user machine. So here we exploit primary trust, which user has on a website because whatever coming from server, he will trust. Okay. That's why we call vulnerability allow attacker to inject malicious script. But in the CSRF, what happened is when we send the link to the user, he refreshed the page without his concern, the request goes to server. Understood. So user was not aware about and server thought whatever coming from user, I can trust. So primary goal in the cross site, uh, you can say scripting is to basically execute a malicious script on a web browser. This is what we've learned. On the other side, in the cross site request forgery, we perform an unauthorized action leveraging a user authenticate session. So whatever we sending instruction is, is going on this particular site. So attack vector is malicious script inject into content where the malicious request itself sent to the web application. As I said, when he sent the phishing link about the website, this website basically has some script. He click on the link. He basically opened the page. He refreshed the page request goes to G this particular legitimate site. So he thought the attack is coming from this machine, but he was not even aware about that. His actions, he, his browser generating this actions, user interaction, as I said, typically does not require active user interaction because he click, he send the server for processing. But in the case of cross -site request was a user to perform some action because he have to click on the link and it load the page, right? So data accesses, you can access sensitive information, modify web page content, but it cannot access or retrieve data from a user session that can perform action on the behalf of the user. Input validation and CSP is a countermeasure. Here the anti-CSRF token, same site cookie attribute is a countermeasure because now we're generating a particular session with session ID. So you cannot create a replica of that. 
impact can lead to the data theft here the impact can be result of unauthorized action like changing user settings and all that so dependency does not depend on user being authenticated and it rely on the user having active session because he need to authenticate first so execution in the content of the user browser because it is happening on that here the execute request on the target site so these are the thin line difference we have on this systems okay so this is the this is all about the cross site scripting and forgery if you really want to understand cross site scripting in detail do check my previous video which give you the better visibility thank you so much do let me know in the comment box shall i made more videos on application security and how do you find my application security series good day bye